my channel Fazi Keto. My friends call me Jolly. I lost 205 pounds on a ketogenic journey. That's right, 205 pounds. And I'm not done yet. Not at all. So if you're new to my channel and you want to watch me lose the rest of my weight, which is a minimum of 16 pounds because I did set two goals. My goal, my doctor's goal when I was 368 pounds, his was at 158 and mine was 148. Funny how that worked out, but I picked my goal before he picked his for me. I'm not listening to his, of course, because that's the top of the weight range. I want to be in the middle. So I know I probably will go below 148, but that is what I set at 368 pounds, and that is my big victory moment once I get there. It has not been easy the last two months, but the summer and spring was amazing, and I flew off a lot of weight that I had been struggling with. I have learned that ibuprofen gets me out of ketosis and stalls my weight loss and makes my water go up. It's why for almost a year of my journey, the last bit of my second year, the whole entire front of my third year was a massive stall for almost a whole year because of the ibuprofen I have to take. So during, I, I was doing really good not having to take it for a long time, but I suffer from migraines, I have fibromyalgia, I got nerve damage, um, and when my head shakes too much from all the issues I have of nerve damage, if I take it, it releases the inflammation, relaxes my muscles. It's the only thing I'm not allergic to. Can't take anything else in the whole entire world for pain or muscle, period. Can't even take the Bengay stuff, like the white, the stuff they put on your body. Nope, we'll die. Literally have an EpiPen for stuff like that. I'm allergic to Benadryl. I have an EpiPen to save my life. If I'm having an allergic reaction and someone accidentally gives me Benadryl. Can't happen, people. It will kill me. Welcome to my life. So I have not had the easiest journey for multiple reasons and I did have to take an ibuprofen two days so remember or yesterday so remember that when I read these numbers off and when you see my keto mojo which we are about to do um, it tells your ketones and you know glucose so if you want to follow along hit subscribe if you're not if you have been following me along on my journey this whole entire time thank you so much because you've seen all my ups and downs and how crazy it can get so let's go ahead and take a look at those numbers I will show you my card manager and my Fitbit as well oh that's low 0 0.6 ketones Glucose 80. So I'm still in ketosis, but it's low ketosis, 7.4. Um, but I knew that was going to happen. Yes, I did work out for an hour yesterday to combat the ibuprofen, but it is winter, so I don't see sweat as much and the only way to combat the ibuprofen is to sweat a lot like if I had a sauna that would be another story um but I did work out for about an hour yesterday um did get 10,057 steps in that is lower than I like I'm trying to do 14,000 a day but at 10,000 is my minimum goal so I did hit the goal there I just want to be in ketosis. I prefer to stay mod or high, but because of the stupid ibuprofen, I dropped down to low. But at least between the exercise I did yesterday, how I ate, I was able to stay in the range, right? I think my total carbs was 15 because I forgot to write it down. And I don't want to stop the video just to go look um, on the thingy. So you just saw it. You know if I'm off or not. But I think that's what it was because I did have a, it's usually 10, but when I have my protein shapes, it brings it to 15. So I'm pretty sure that's what it said. I did get 8.6 hours of sleep, so 8 hours of sleep in 6 minutes. Um, but an hour and 7 minutes was waking up. 
to go pee or just turning over or yeah it says I woke up 32 times last night so that got worse not better um my weigh in today was exactly as yesterday and I'm perfectly fine with that because usually when I go down two pounds I go up a pound the next day and then I have to fight several days to get that pound back off so I'm okay with that completely plus it's the end of the month well beginning of the month which we all know what that means that time of the month is coming <laughs> So yeah, hopefully it just stays away. I have an IUD, and before keto, I never got them anyways. So, but ever since I started to lose, like change my diet so drastically lately, um, and I just told you all my weight without showing you the weight clip. I guess I'm sticking it in now. So I guess you saw my weight clip because um, I'm filming this before I actually made the video. I usually wait for a different spot for the weight. <laughs> But anyways, um, and I lost track of thought what I was going to say. I've had a collagen coffee, well, a half of a scoop. I'm on to the second half right now. It is 11 a.m. almost. I have been up since 6 a.m. I did wake up at 5 and almost stayed up at 5, but it's so cold. I'm keeping my house 66, which is way too cold for me. Like, I am running around in some thick pajamas, but I have things to do, so I have clothes on right now, and I feel freezing. Freezing. Okay, 66 is what I always kept my house at, or 64, and I would be burning, sweating, and hot. Even a year ago, when I weighed more. But now it seems um, my bones are too close to my skin now. <laughs> They're getting really cold. Um, if you watch Keto and the Chaos's um, Halloween type video that they put out um, on her reverse diet and stuff, it was Halloween day. I think it came out yesterday. I was watching it yesterday and this morning because I got distracted with tons of things to do and had to go back and finish watching it. But she was talking about how her bones are showing and how she doesn't want to be, you know, all bones on top with some chubby on the bottom still. But that's my issue. Like, my top is a small, okay? Everything around me right now is a small. I see bones everywhere. My rib cage is so dilted in right now like I see all my ribs um the only way my bra strap would get any smaller is if I lost some fat on my back but the truth is I can't even pinch any kind of fat so I don't think there is any there I think all I got left is my actual bone around my whole entire rib cage um and I do think it's gone down to closer to a 30. I know it's a 35, so I, I got 36 as bras, but they seem to be sliding off me. So I might have to go down again. But Victoria's Secret's a little pain in the butt. It, I always need their help to find the bra I buy because they always move it. And then they're like, well, you need to buy this size. And it's kind of hard to sit there and argue with them because they think they're right. And yes. Yeah, yes, it's a teeny bit tight when you buy it, but within a day or two, it's it's not too tight, and I'm on the last little hook, and they're too expensive for that. I want to be on the first hook when I buy something and slowly tighten it as it gets um, more stretched out, and that's how bras work, unfortunately. They do start collapsing, getting stretched out. It's why there's multiple places to put it, so you can keep adjusting until you have to go buy a new one, unfortunately. Sucks, doesn't it? Because they're expensive. So... <laughs> So I haven't eaten today, but let me tell you, I think today is day nine, nine, I think it's, is it day nine? I think nine or 10, I'm losing track. I should have wrote it down of my, I think it's day nine of the 30 day pre-holiday keto challenge that I'm doing with a bunch of lovely ladies. Check the links below so you can watch their videos if you like. Um, it's basically, I, my goal was to get all the water weight off, get to my lowest, which I'm so close to my lowest. I'm less than half a pound away from my lowest, um, to get all the water weight off before Thanksgiving. Well, now I might actually get one or two pounds or more off in the month of November at the rate I'm going, but I don't know because it's when I have to take a lot of ibuprofen. It's really hard for me to lose weight anywhere from September to January because that's when my fibromyalgia goes out of control. I suffer from severe migraines this time of the year. It's like, 
a weather change thing. My my sinuses hate it. My head hates it. Um, fibromyalgia goes through the roof. It's fine during the heat. I'm great in the heat and the humidity. But once it starts cold, cooling off and it just becomes really bad. But the um, keto has helped it a billion times full. It was so bad. I used to not get out of bed for months at a time because the pain was excruciating everywhere and the ibuprofen could barely touch it. Um, so keto has helped tremendously in that. Also, I did some um, prepping last night. I'm not a prepper, but I've decided it's just faster, easier for me um, during this challenge not to think about my food. So I cooked up three dishes of six ounces each of the ground hamburger meat with my favorite um, seasoning in it. Then I cooked up four containers, I think, because it was a five because I ate one last night. Four containers of the pork chops. Um, it equals between seven and eight, I think. Well, okay, they have big bones. And I cut the fat off, so I think it'll be about six to seven ounces per one once I, I'll weigh them before I actually eat them, but I don't eat the fat and I cut the bones off to weigh them. I also do not use the fat for the hammer meat once I drain it all out, okay? It is no fat, barely. You'll see a little dried on there, just a little, but that's really Kerrygold butter that I stuck in there. I like to control my fat level myself just using some Kerrygold butter. Um, I don't, if I eat the fat on the, the pork chop, I will throw up. Even though I love the taste of it, it has caused me stomach issues my whole life. The same with steaks, ribs, like no matter what I eat, I cannot eat the fat unless I want to be extremely sick. Now I can get away with eating the fat attached to the crackling pork rinds, um, but that causes some heartburn too, but not as bad. But any other fat, I'm over the toilet throwing up all my own miserable. I thought I couldn't eat pork chops. I thought I couldn't eat hamburger meat. I thought I couldn't eat all these different kind of foods most of my life because I would end up throwing up all night. I learned as long as I don't eat the grease or the fat with it, now bacon's fine. I can eat that all day long, but I also burn it. Um, I love crispy bacon. Um, so, yeah, I just... I learned I could eat it as long as I cut that off. You don't have to eat the fat to be keto. Remember, keto isn't always about eating all this crazy amount of fat people tell you you have to eat. For some people, they need it for energy. They need it to feel healthy. Um, but for a lot of people, they just don't, they don't need it. They can eat the boneless, skinless chicken. They can eat the fat that's in a salmon instead. They can have some little bit of Kerrygold butter, a little bit of olive oil, some fat you can control. Um, fats from other sources like avocados, um, and you're still keto because it's all about your carb intake. It's about what your body processes, meaning I know some people who can do 76 net carbs and they have better ketones than I do. And no, they don't take the fake exogenous ketones. Um, um, yeah, that's a whole nother video. But um, because their body processes it that way and they... They work out, they dance, they do all kind of stuff, and they can stay in ketosis. Um, me, on the other hand, nope, uh-uh, can't. Even ibuprofen kicks this girl. It's frustrating. I will admit it, completely frustrating, but I hold strong, and I keep going on because every day I get happier and happier, and I feel better and better, and I've lost so much weight already. Um, like I said, I am not done. And even when I do get done, my plan is to do maintenance videos, show you my life, show you my workouts probably by that time. Um, and I'm not sure where I'm stopping. Also, I want to do these videos to help you, to inspire you to get off the couch and just walk through your house. Maybe go do some laundry if you've been sitting on the couch all day. Or, you know, instead of eating that cookie that's full of sugar, let's go make a keto cookie. Because I will start doing videos like that. I I did so much keto baking um, in the first year. And then I stopped because I thought that was causing me issues. Because I stalled during those months. But come to find out. And I did not find out until this past year. Until like, I think it was March or February that I realized it was the ibuprofen doing it with me. Because I went back through all my paperwork that I had been 
keeping this whole entire time. Um, and I realized I think it's the ibuprofen. So I did experiment after experiment for a couple months, and yes, it was the ibuprofen. So every time I had seven month stalls, and I had a lot of them, was during my fibromyalgia craziness where I was having to take it basically from September to like February time frame. I could lose weight in February. It was like, what happened? Why am I dropping weight February, March, April, June? Then, you know, July, I was in Hawaii every July, and, you know, I went off keto because the person I was with just wasn't having me stick to keto. He just did not like that. Um, I mean, I did keto, like, five days out of the week, and always the last two weeks there, I did keto. I put my foot down. Um, but, but yeah, so I, at first, I thought it was just for me throwing myself so far under the bus in July each year that was messing me up for all those months. But it actually wasn't. It was actually come September is when I started taking the ibuprofen again. And I watched the pattern. Seven months stall, seven months stall, eight months stall, like through all these years. Even my first year on keto, I only lost a tiny bit during those months. And then I just dropped 100 pounds in like six months after those months. And that was the only common denominator is once the weather started changing and and the stupid um, ragweed came out and all different kind of things and I started getting my migraines again, I would pop the three ibuprofen a day, at least one or two, but usually three. And they are not over-the-counter ones. They are 800 milligram doctor prescribed ones I've been on since 13 years old. Uh, so it affects me more than if I had gone in and just took an over-the-counter one that's 200 but they do nothing for me. I have to have the 800. So that's how I discovered it. And everything changed. Like in March, I did go up 23 pounds because there were no eggs and there was no meat. And at that point of my journey, I had a severe stomach issue where I could not eat any vegetables or fruit at all. No berries, no nothing. So during the lockdown, I decided, well, you know, everyone preaches calories in, calories out so much, which I've never, ever believed in for me because I have polycystic ovary syndrome and stuff like that. Um, I am very insulin resistant. But I was like, okay, let's do this. Let's just eat some plain baked potatoes, no butters and stuff. Let's eat some um, rice cake. Let's eat things like... Um, what a, oh, oatmeal, the low sugar oatmeal. I was eating that. Um, so my calories went under about a thousand a day during that time, and I gained 23 pounds. I'm not sure what my carbs were because, you know, it's a potato, it's oatmeal, it's rice cakes. So I gained 23 pounds. But April came around, there were meats everywhere, but my body still could not process any eggs at that time. I had gone too long without eggs, um, and the eggs I could find were not ones I can eat without getting sick. So I did lose the 23 pounds easy in April. All gone. Whoosh off. It was probably all water weight, not real fat, um, but that was a lot of water. So that was just water. Then May, I got sick for 11 days because my doctor told me go back on my Nexium. I told her the Nexium I went off of in December because it was killing me, making me so sick. I also went off my metformin then. And I was like, it's making me so sick. Um, like, I think I'm having an allergic reaction to them. There's something really horrible with these things. And I had been on them for like 12 plus years. And I was getting sicker and sicker. And she's like, no, you have to go back on them. I went back on them was on them like 10 days before I was in the ER, so sick and miserable and the worst stomach illness I ever had in my life. I thought I was going to die. I barely could talk. I couldn't hold anything in at all. I couldn't even swallow water. The heartburn, the GER, everything was excruciating. Um, and I've had it all my life, so this is a billion times worse. And I was throwing up like, it, it wasn't even bowel like green it was like antifreeze green like it was crazy I was so sick they had to give me IVs I was extremely dehydrated um and that lasted 11 days 
11 days where I was just begging to get better and praying to God to please help me because I could not eat. Barely could cross the bathroom. It was horrendous. And the, the um, emergency room guy said, I think you're having a very bad adverse reaction to these Nexium. And for your life's sake, I don't think you should ever take them again. But whatever it was, the reaction, it Nexium should have been on my system in 72 hours. But I was so sick so sick um and all i ate during that time was a bunch of carbs because it was just the plain baked potato cold this time and i did eat some saltine crackers and vanilla wafers but i didn't gain any weight during that time i actually lost seven pounds because i was sick the whole time sick nothing stayed in me so sick i couldn't even drink water it was horrible i just i never ever want to live through that again that was so bad um, and then the rest of the months during the summer, I lost 10 to 11 pounds and I ate one pound and then September happened. And then that's what made me really know for sure because I started taking the ibuprofen and I lost one pound in September, two pounds in October. But I sweated and I killed myself for those three pounds because of that stupid ibuprofen. So right now I'm still up half a pound and we're working on getting that off. And I probably ran my mouth a long time because I just realized I've been talking nonsense for probably 18 minutes now. So I went on Ultra Beauty's website and Morpheus has a new palette and I had a coupon because if you, if you put that honey, um, it's honey something. It's the honey coupon thing you can put on your browsers. Um, they always give you three, $3.50 off if you spend $15 or more. So, and I had it delivered to the one picking it up at the store, so I don't have to pay shipping and handling. So in the end, I pay twenty dollars for the palette because I have the coupon and this other little thing. And the truth is, I could get, could have gotten it completely free because I have the Ultra Beauty Reward Card, and I've spent enough money in the last year to have eighty three dollars saved up on that from buying makeup through this year. However, I like to use that Christmas. It helps me cover my daughter's Christmas fund. Plus, she saw her one gift I was getting her. Her little AI Yoda came in yesterday. That was like $65. I ordered it back at the beginning of last year um, before all this craziness happened in the world. So she got that early because she saw it. So I'm definitely going to be using all my points at Ultra Beauty this year for my daughter's Christmas because she really loves the makeup. And it's really expensive because usually the one she wants is never on sale. Of course, she does use Morphe like I do, but the palette she likes just aren't ones they put on sale very often. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But it's what she wants, right? And I'm hoping this week, or at least Monday, to um, for them to have that P.O. box open for me because I really want to do cards as a change. Yes, I'm going to do the Poshmark because I really want this stuff on my house. Hopefully it will sell. Um, but I'm really more excited about the card exchange right now, getting Christmas cards back and forth um, and stuff like that. I'm kind of thinking about putting the Christmas tree up today. I uh, haven't decided really. I want it up. The It's so big. My house is so wide and empty right now, and this tree is huge. It's going to have to go right here beside me. It is four feet in dimension, like diameter. It's going to take up four feet. So I have to push the carpet back, move this over, move the weight bench, move all the weights. But it's really the only place it can go. And I also kind of don't want it covering up my windows, but like I said, it's really the only place I have room for it. Um, because I don't want to block my kitchen. I like the whole openness thing. Because I could put it in front of the island and then they'll block it. I went to go buy a smaller one yesterday. But I want the same one I have. Just a smaller version. It's $80. And I'm like, I'm not wasting $80. I'll just take up more space in my house. Because my tree originally was $500. And I think we got it for like 125 years ago. My mom bought it for me for a Christmas present. Um, it was on clearance. I'm getting so much spam calls today, I swear. So if y'all voted today, I hope y'all all stayed safe. Um, I voted last week, or was it the week before? I've lost all track of time, people. But like I was saying, no matter what the outcome is on this election, um, just remember 
if your friends voted a way you don't agree with, it doesn't mean they don't love you. It doesn't mean that they're not your friend. It doesn't mean they're racist. It doesn't mean they hate them. It just means they view the person differently than the media might portray them as. They believe in the politics that are behind it, like their views. Um, it has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do, uh, like, I just don't even understand. People automatically assume it has to do with race every time. That's all I've been hearing lately. No, no, honey, no, no, I, I love everyone. Everyone, most people do. Yes, there are some bigoted people out there in this world. God will take care of them one day. Um, but it's just, you know, what people stand for. It's just how it is. It usually has nothing to do with any of the other things. So I hope everybody can remember that because it left four years ago, even though I didn't vote, but I was happy for who won. Um, I lost friends I had known since I was 10 years old. 10 years old. Because they wanted me to vote for someone who was not even like, they were just the side people. You know, voting for those side peoples are wasting your vote because they're never going to win. They're just not. So, uh, yeah, so I, I didn't vote at all, but because I was happy about who won, because I sure didn't want that other, mm -mm, I won't even name her name, but uh, I lost my friend over that. And I think it's ridiculous because I didn't tell her I thought she was dumb for wasting her vote. Like if she didn't want him to win, she should have voted for her the other one that actually had a chance versus the side people who have no chance. It's kind of funny. I'm watching the media today and everything says, you know, there's only a 1% chance he's going to win again. That's a little biased because it is their opinion. So everything's biased one way or another on everything nowadays. I'm noticing like, it's like during this whole lockdown, my eyes have become open to all kinds of stuff. This whole diet thing, realizing that we were lied to for so long about carbs and about calories in, calories out, and about what's healthy, what's not, and where this research actually came from and who actually paid for it. It's made me open my eyes to everything. Everything, like, okay, they've lied to us about food. They lied to us about the meds we've been taking and that we actually didn't need them for these problems. Uh, we could have just fixed it with a diet, but did anyone tell us that? Did anyone offer us to go ketogenic, even though this diet's been around since before the 1920s? Like, it's been around for all mankind, but, you know, 1920s, it became kind of big. Um, did any doctor offer me that? No, they spoon-fed me horrible advice. Eat 200 or less cal or carbs because this is a diabetes diet, doctor diet thing, you know, diabetic, do da -da -da, diabetic diet. No, no, 200 carbs is too much for a diabetic. 100 carbs, too much for a diabetic. What? They, they've been feed, spoon feeding us the wrong information and about everything. So it's just made me open my eyes about the whole world, about everything. I'm not taking anything for granted anymore. I'm doing my research on everything. Everything. Because I no longer believe anything the media says. I no longer believe most research. I need to know who funded it, where it came from, how long it lasted, was it controlled on everything. I'm talking about every kind of thing. Um, like, no. This girl no longer takes anything at face value. I go look myself. And that's why I love some of y'all's channels because y'all do the same thing. So I know, I know for sure when Keto Diamond says something, she's done her research on it. Okay, she doesn't take anything for face value. She's done her research. Princess Ninja, in Keto, she's been doing a lot of research too. Like I, there are certain channels that I know do their research. And Keto in the Chaos, look at her. She can eat more carbs and still lose weight. She didn't just say, oh, I have to do keto this way, um, or, uh, you know, she 
used her own body and she's done tons of research on reverse dieting, like hours of it. So, and, and there's so many of y'all that does research all day long. Um, so please don't take offense if I did not name your name. I'm just saying the videos I've watched in the last day or two. Um, but so many people, sadly, just go by what they're taught in health class. What they're taught as a dietitian in college, they don't say, well, have I been taught everything? Was the information they gave me right? They're just like, well, I had five years of college for this, so I'm the one right and you're the one wrong. <sighs> have you researched keto? Do you actually know what it is? Do you know that 90% of people who usually does keto do a clean paleo type keto and it's extremely healthy and a lot of them don't eat the skin or fat either? Um, not all of them do the very dirty keto, which there's nothing wrong with that. You will lose weight on that. I'm just saying when they hear keto, all they see is bricks of butter and, and tons of bacon and hot dogs with no buns and grease and they don't see people eating the avocados, the spinach, the broccoli, the Brussels sprouts, the asparagus, the salmon, cod, uh, flounder, boneless skinless chicken breasts, a beautiful piece of steak, okay, even if you're to buy a quarter house, they only see all these negative thoughts when they hear that word. Kind of like with politicians, when we hear either politician's name right now, we only see the negative thoughts with most of them. Instead of seeing past what people show us, because I thought keto was all that bad stuff only until I saw past it, did my research, and now I see keto can be very, very clean very very healthy even the dirty is better than the standard american diet it's better than going through mcdonald's drive through and eating all that ketchup have y'all seen how much sugar is in mcdonald's ketchup and guess what i've talked 30 minutes because i rambled again this is what happens when i get on here too early see when i get on here at 1 30 i know i only have 20 minutes to get the video done so so yeah but I've talked so much and I still have to show you what I eat today and all that good stuff. <sighs> so I'm shutting up. Shutting up. I will show you what I eat today. And I'm probably going to have one of those cinnamon roll um, protein shakes today because, oh my gosh, it's my new favorite. But they're expensive. They do not sell them in bulk. They're only sold in fours for $8 at Walmart, and me and my daughter went and bought the store out of them yesterday because she loves them, I love them. We each got four packs. Yes, very expensive, but she's been eating it every morning for breakfast, so it's $2 a breakfast each day. Um, it's better than what school would give you, that's for sure, for $2. And then um, I've been doing them for my lunches, so I'm paying $2 for lunch. And I'm okay with that because they're so yummy. And yes, I do have all the other ones that were cheaper because right now you can go on Sam's.com if you are a member and you can buy the 12 for $13 of the strawberry ones up until December. They're on sale, but only the strawberry ones. Don't ask me why. But they're one of my favorites anyway. So I might have bought four packs of those, I think. But my mom likes them too, so me and my mom's going to split them. Hey, it is 3 o'clock and I'm having my big meal of the day. I will have my um, protein shake and everything later. I decided to do it a little different today. I'm having my last collagen coffee right now. It's almost done. I ended up rolling up the pancakes this time. I used a new frying pan that's 10 inches instead of the tiny one. And it's a green safe life frying pan. It's supposed to work better. I'm going to see if it changes the texture and stuff of it. Um, but I just rolled it up. I want to try something different. I think they'll make perfect crates. They really roll good, people. Like, crazy good. So, how hard is my journey? Well, it can be pretty hard when you have allergies. Sam's Warehouse ran out of their eggs. A special one that I can have that doesn't make me sick. So I tried Costco's again, which is supposed to be very similar. And I used to could eat them all the time. And I also did Sam's Warehouse meat. Okay, it is not hormone-free, antibiotic-free. It is none of the cool stuff that I normally only eat because of my allergies. 
but I was trying to save money because, hey, they were a dollar a pound almost. Like, they were not even two dollars, and I was sharing with my parents. <sighs> I will never do that again. I'm at the end of a larger reaction now that I've been going through for over two hours. Um, itching like crazy, my lips swole, my nose is itching, sinuses draining, could not stay off the potty, so, so, so sick, almost throwing up everywhere, shaking, tears running down my face. When I have, I, I, see, that's an out, that's how I get if I'm exposed to latex, if I'm exposed, a sub latex swells my throat shut. So I know it wasn't from someone using latex. Um, you know, I get that way with bananas, I get like that with any kind of antibiotic, um, but I also get tons of hives everywhere with most antibiotics. So, I don't know what caused it for sure. Was it the egg? Was it the pork chops? Was it both? All I know is, I'm not touching either one. I'm sticking to the more expensive meat, um, which I was trying not to because it's expensive, and I'm only going to stick to Sam's eggs, and if they just don't have any, I guess I'm just not going to eat any, right? And it might... Like, I don't know which one it is, but I don't care because I'm not going through that again. I'm not going to test that anytime soon. Also, um, now I'm afraid of pork chops. <sighs> it's terrible when you have to be afraid of food. But when I get this sick, um, I hate food. It's that simple. So tomorrow I will probably be having my protein shake, my coffees bacon. Um, I have some hammer meat that I cooked up. I'm also going to try to go get some from the Fresh Mark where I know is the healthy meats and I know doesn't have any antibiotics, no hormones, and they don't use latex to so the one I go to. Um, I guess it's worth paying the extra and going the, it's really far from here, but driving that far so that I don't have to sit here feeling like I do right this minute. Like, I am very shaky and I'm afraid I'm going to have to run to the bathroom again. I know, too much information, but that's how sick I am from it. Um, I don't really eat that much food anyway, so I don't even know why I was worried about saving a few dollars. Seriously, I eat like six ounces of meat a day times seven days. Um... And I usually can get pretty good deals on them. I have my collagen. I was eating three eggs a day. That's really not that much money. So I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking Christmas is coming up and I want some money for Black Friday. I think that's what I was thinking. Not worth it. So not worth it. Mm-mm. Gonna stick to the more expensive meats that I know I can handle. See, I can't handle vegetables. So if you watch my channel... This reaction is what I get to most vegetables that I eat. I can only have 83 grams of cauliflower, or I will have this reaction. Broccoli, I can't have any broccoli or cabbage or spinach anymore, or I have this reaction. Um, but I had this reaction before keto, so this is not a keto thing. This is not new. I have severe allergies, severe sensitivity in certain times of the year. Like certain times of the year, my throat will swell shut if I eat a peanut or a strawberry. But the rest of the year I can eat it just fine and test negative to allergies for it. It's the same with wheat, it's the same with a whole list of food. A whole list of food. And I've learned, being 42, what time of the year I can eat what foods. <sighs> so, I'm not saying here, bitchy. I'm just saying if I, if I can do all this struggling and lose my weight and just deal with it, I can help you too. You can do it. Mm -hmm. We can find some foods that you can eat. Because I'm not the only one. There's tons of people that watch my channel that talks about their stomach issues, their food sensitivity. I understand. This girl understands completely. Completely. <clears throat> but, um, and it makes my head shake a whole lot more after I've had a reaction. So, I think I'm going to bed early. I'm exhausted. So I hope everyone has a great day, rest of your day. I don't even know what time it is. I was putting my Christmas tree up. That's halted. I am not getting my exercise in today. And who knows what the scale will say because usually after having a reaction, and no, I did not turn to crackers. I'm just dealing with the nausea. But I usually go up a pound or two after a reaction. It's just water weight. But I'm praying I don't. But there is a possibility. 
because it causes me inflammation in my body. That's why I can't eat nuts. It always causes me inflammation. So I'm shutting up and hopefully sometime tomorrow I can go out and get some foods that I can handle. Hopefully Sam's will get the eggs back in because I really love them. I really enjoyed that. That's like one of my favorite things to eat. And uh, I do have three days of hamburger meat cooked. Um, it's only one and a half day if I can't find eggs because I eat about 12 ounces of hamburger meat to 10 if that's all I'm eating in a day. So shutting up. Oh yeah, tomorrow will probably just be that thing of hamburger meat, bacon for breakfast, some chicken broth, and my collagen. And maybe the protein shake too.